Hi, we are solving this problem for equilibrium or rigid bodies, and we are asked to find the reaction forces at B and at A. So we have a beam, and we don't know anything about the weight of the beam, therefore it's neglected compared to the force that is applied to the beam. And we have here a pin at B, and here we have a simple support at A. A pin restricts two degrees of freedom. It takes, it restricts the motion in X and it restricts the motion in Y. This simple support only restricts motion in the direction perpendicular to the beam. It does not restrict any motion along the beam. So when we are solving a rigid body or a part in, in, particle, in the particles um, problem, in equilibrium, the first thing that we have to do is draw our free body diagram. And of course, we need to know which kind of coordinate system we will use. So I will use x and y as our coordinate system. And therefore, our free body diagram will be very similar to the original drawing, right? And I will put my active forces, is this distributed force that I have here. A distributed force is equivalent to a concentrated force. In this case, since this is a constant force, it will be the area under this uh, concentrated uh, distributed force, which will be the base, which is 4 meters, times the height, which is 3 kilonewtons meters, and it gives me 12 kilonewtons, and it will be located at half of the distance. So this will be 12 kilonewtons and will be located at half of the distance, which is 2 meters. Then this is the active force. Now we have the reactive forces. As I said, a pin restricts the motion in y direction and in x direction. So any motion that is restricted receives a force, a reaction force. Therefore, I have two reaction forces. B x and b y. And I also said that in at a, a simple support only restricts a motion perpendicular to the beam. Therefore, we have only one reaction we can call normal force at a. So this is perpendicular to the beam. We do not have a reaction along the beam because that motion is not restricted. And we have the distance. As you see, this is 30 degrees and this is 3 degrees. So therefore, this distance over here will be 3 cosine of 30 and this distance over here will be 4 meters. And this height over here that we will also need will be 3 sine of 30. So we have all the distance we require, and then the second step is apply our equations of equilibrium. So we, as you know, we have the equations of equilibrium are adding forces in x, adding forces in y, and taking moment respect to one point. I will start by taking moment respect to one point. I will start by taking moment respect to B. And in this way, I have only one unknown, that is the reaction at A. So if I take moments at B, this is, will be equals to zero. What forces do I have? I have two meters times 12. I put my hand at B. My distance is the palm and I curl my fingers towards the force, and I get that this is a contraclockwise, so it's a positive. 2 times 12, positive. And 12 is kilonewtons, therefore if I put 12, the result will be in kilonewtons. Now, the other force that I have is the reactive force at A. I have a vertical component and a horizontal component. 
since this angle is 30, this angle is 60, and this angle over here is 30 again. Therefore, my component, let me draw it a little bit more clear. So this is the y component, and this is 30 degrees. So my y component will be an a cosine, this is a triangle, so this will be cosine, and this will be sine of it. So, and the distance, actually the distance, let me draw it correctly, here. My distance to A will be till here, so this is 3, 3 cosine of 30. So this is the correct, so this is my point A where the force is applied. So, the distance from B to an A, which are, is perpendicular, will be equal to 4 plus 3 cosine of 30. And this moment, if I put my fingers like that, and I curl my fingers like that, that will be a clockwise. And remember that if we have x and y, contra-clockwise is positive and clockwise is negative. So right here, we have a clockwise moment, therefore it's negative. So we have negative 4 plus 3 cosine of 30, cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, times NAY, which is NA, and I say that is cosine of 30 again. Let me write cosine of 30 which is square root of 3 over 2 again, right? And then this in AX, which is the force in A sine of 30, also produce a moment. What is the distance? I can slide, as you see, my force over here, and I need this height over here. That height is 3 sine of 30. And that moment is also negative because it's clockwise as well. So I put my fingers over here, and I curl my force, this is, I slide the force all the way to here, and this is the perpendicular distance. Therefore, I have this height, which is negative 3 sine of 30, which is 1 half, times Na sine of 30, again. And this is equals to 0. So from here, as you see, the only unknown that I have is, sorry, I already wrote the sign, so I don't have to write an x, right? So the only unknown is an a. Therefore, I can solve for an a, and I get that an a is equals to I have the solution right here, 3.713 kilonewtons. I can round this number and put that in A is equal to 3.7 kilonewtons. Even though I round the number to give my results, please keep at least three or four decimals for further calculations. Otherwise, you will have rounding errors. So now that we got our Na, then we can apply our other equations of equilibrium, which is forces in x, which will lead me to the following equation. So here I have Bx plus Nax, right? Nax, I know I don't have any other forces in A. This is equals to zero. That is Bx plus in A, and I told you already that the force in NAX is times sine of 30. Therefore, BX is equals to negative 1.86 kilonewtons. What does it mean that I have a negative value? It means that if I at the beginning said that my force Bx is in this direction because pins can work in both directions and I found that this is negative, it means it goes in this direction. 
Okay, so because I assume that it was going to the right and give me a negative value, therefore it goes to the left. And now I add forces in y equals to zero and I get NAY minus 12 plus BY equals to zero. That gives me NAY. I already said that is NA cosine of 30 minus 12 kilonewtons plus B. Well, and I can already solve for B, right, which it will be. So if I put that everything in the other side of the equation, that gives me by. So my by, if I plug in the numbers for NA, give me a value of 8.78 kilonewtons. And that gives me a positive value. It means that I assume that it was, po it was going up and I got a positive value, it means that it's actually going up. And those are the three reaction forces for this problem. Remember that a rigid body in 2D has three degrees of freedom of three ways to move to the right, up and down, or right, left, and it can rotate. So I need three reactions in order to have the system in equilibrium. And those are my three reactions.